right, here we are in the studio. It is almost done. It's built and we have decorated it and there's furniture and there is a Pete and a James, uh, but it's a work in progress. But I thought I'd give you guys a bit of a tour, show you what's, what's going on, how I work. Firstly, this is my brother Pete. You may have seen him before. Hi there. So you're a producer. I am, yeah. Like I write your scripts and stuff. You'll film them, yeah. I edit it. He also makes me tea and cleans up, so. Yeah. Senior janitor, Barb's the 360. That's me, hello, I'm behind the camera. James is a incredibly professional cameraman and editor and videographer and- No pressure. And yeah, so if there's any flaws in this video, you can blame him, blame him for that. And if there's any editing issues, it might be Pete. Nothing's ever my fault. But yeah, this is definitely an upgrade from where we were with uh, what, Dad's dining room. Yeah, when you started out, it was just living at Dad's house, yeah. working out of his dining room. Trying to avoid his uh, floral curtains and my mum's cushions. Oh my and... God, yeah, yeah, no. But then you got an upgrade. To his bedroom. <laughs> yeah, he moved out of his master bedroom, his, his main bedroom, and let us film in there. And we still use it as a studio, actually, so. Yeah, if you watch anything of your older stuff, it's all filmed in there. I think it's disguised quite well, actually. A lot of credit for the whole tech chat goes to our dad, actually, Chris. So um, I don't think we've ever probably said thank you to him for that. But yeah, he's been the most supportive person in the entire world. Yeah, but sure. now we're here, we have our own space, which is good. Um, and it took, what, four months to make? So tomorrow morning, work starts to completely transform this into a new studio slash office thing. Doors are coming off, windows are going in, a new door at the back, flooring, acoustic paneling, vaulting the entire ceiling so all this is gonna be gone. It's gonna take about two months, but I'm very excited. Uh, I had a great company called Homark who came in and did all this. I would love to say I made this myself. James is actually a fantastic home builder and I don't, wait, why didn't you do this for me? You could have done this. Right? <laughs> I could have, you didn't ask me. No, I didn't ask you. <laughs> You're building your own home at the same well, time. I'll take credit for it. Deal, deal. Yeah, yeah, Homark I, will be I happy with work. that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, so Homark came in and they gutted it. Everything was taken out. It really opened up the space. We've got these lovely windows in now. We kept these beams, which are absolutely beautiful. They really add a bit of sort of character to the place. Because that's one of the problems. Like you can make a studio, you can rent a unit, you can, you know, Anyone can do that, but it can all look a bit basic and a bit officey, and that's something we wanted to avoid. Still a work in progress, obviously. We're trying to make this our own. There's a lot we want to put on the wall. What do you think? Maybe a massive, the tech chap neon sign like PC Centric has or something? What do you reckon? Maybe. What do you guys think? If you've got any thoughts actually, or any feedback or suggestions about how we can make this space a bit better and a bit more personal, then you know, let me know in the comments below. But very proud of this nice brick wall. Real bricks not just your crappy laminate stuff. That took a lot of time and money. You've got the Tech Chat blue wall, which you may recognize from the old studio. Uh, we had that color matched because they don't actually sell the same paint anymore. Acoustics aren't too bad now. When they finished the actual construction, it was so echoey in here, ridiculously echoey. I even paid extra for some fancy underfloor and uh, wall insulation, which was like acoustic insulation. Didn't make any difference at all. So what has helped, and is hiding behind Pete, actually. We've got these fantastic acoustic panels. I'll leave a link in the description below. And they've made such a difference. So generally, this is my setup now. So I'll talk, not at Pete. Pete wouldn't be there sometimes. And we'll have the camera there. I've got the uh, aperture light there. That's the C300D2. Got another one over here. That's the older C120D2. Actually, I've got the big umbrella as well, the big dome for that in here. I've got my little locker. This is where if Pete or James have done anything wrong, I have to put them in here for a few hours so they learn their lesson. But a bit of storage in there, but I didn't actually have room, despite this new space, room for this whole dome uh, to go up here as well. So in fact, I'm gonna show you something really horrible. Do you want to see the worst thing about this whole setup? Ignore my horrible shadows. Look what I'm covering with this acoustic panel. Don't judge me. <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> But that's fine because that, that, oh no. That goes there. Smoke and mirrors. <laughs> Nothing is as it seems. I have collected a few bits and pieces over the years. A uh, Keanu Reeves cyberpunk doll figure. It's not a toy and never take this out of the box. One day it'll be worth something, maybe in 2077. Actually, look at this though. My brother Pete bought this for me for my, uh, my birthday recently. Turbo Man doll. I'm trying to find a Turbo Man doll. If you've not seen Jingle All The Way, then this will be really weird. It'll still be weird even if you have. I want to talk about this. 
standing desks. Uh, so obviously standing desks aren't new to most people, uh, but they are to me and they're the best thing ever. So this was actually sent over from uh, the guys over at FlexiSpot. It is a Sano desk. It's actually the biggest top they make. I think it's 70 by 160 or something. I basically wanted to replicate a nice wide desk for I can do product shots, but also film on. And obviously being a standing desk, you can adjust it. You can also pre-program a couple of uh, heights to it. So you can just come in in the morning and if I'm gonna do some standing work or you know, uh, present, make my videos like this, I can bring it up to a certain level if I wanna sit down. New desk. It's very cool actually. Lovely bit of kit, really, really solid. Weighs an absolute ton. Took me maybe 20 minutes to put it together or something. Uh, but it's just really added to that sort of flexibility of how we work because with that desk, I have found I'm a lot more productive. So generally what I do, now I've got these new MacBooks as well. I was normally just sort of restricted to this PC setup where I've got my desktop, but now with the new MacBook Pro 16s and 14s, you can get the 100% performance off battery. I don't have to plug it in. It's just a nice sort of break away from sitting at a desk, which is really nice. So uh, I will leave a link to this in the description below if you want to check out the Flexi Spot desk. You can actually get loads of different colors on the top, black, uh, black, brown, white woods. You can also get matching legs, little under cable runners as well. So you can really customize it to how you like. Definitely recommend it. It really does make a difference just to how energetic you feel, you know? You don't have to be sat down all the time. But if you do want to sit down, got a couple of options. And actually I want to tell you about them because what have we got? One, two, three, four, five, five chairs in here for a maximum of three people, which is, doesn't really make a lot of sense. But if you were wondering, what does Tom the Tech Chap sit on all day? One of those big questions. This guy first, probably. We've got this Hummer Miller chair, a little bit pricey, very pricey, uh, but it is so comfortable and also looks pretty good as well. It's, uh, they teamed up with Logitech, so it is the Hammer Miller Logitech M-Body gaming chair. I don't know what really makes it gaming, except it has this like cyberpunky blue color to it. It does look pretty cool, incredibly comfortable, and also very, very adjustable in sort of every which way you'd want. So definitely recommend these. Again, I'll leave a link below if you fancy it. If they are a little bit too pricey though, get one of these guys. This is a Noble chair uh, from my good friend, Stephen Levitt, who basically made them what they are today. Noble chairs, I've had these for years. My black leather one over there. Oh, and this guy is the Noble chairs icon. This is actually really interesting. It's a brand new fabric-y one. So unlike the leather ones, which I found got a bit sticky sometimes when I'm sort of sat here all day and my back gets a bit sweaty. This is actually really nice. We'll see how it lasts over time, but yeah, not too expensive actually, and the fabric is really nice. Again, nice and, uh, nice and adjustable. It means after a hard day of YouTubing, I can just, you know, take a, take a step back and enjoy. <laughs> this is how, this is usually the setup when I'm, I'm leaning back and everyone else is working. Furniture in here is all a bit slapdash. I'm not an interior designer, you'll be surprised to hear. Various things I've bought from Dunelm and May.com and Amazon and Ikea. It's all, as I say, a work in progress. I had actually this nice little desk made from a guy over at Etsy. Uh, and one of the things I really wanted to do with this space was keep it modular and keep it sort of flexible. So you can sort of shoot from almost any angle, which is what we wanted, not just this is the set, this is where we can shoot. And so being able to sort of drag desks a little bit Hopefully we don't scratch the floor doing that. And actually being able to just shoot upwards and have a bit of sort of verticality to the space. And also because we've left the ceiling white, uh, we can actually use it as a bit of a bounce. So we've got this aperture pointing upwards as my glorious assistant, my glamorous assistant <laughs> turns it around and actually gives us a very scary dragon shadow going on there from this MSI little dragon. This is the best thing ever. It's a chunky little MSI dragon this. I don't know what I'm gonna do with it, but it looks quite good there. Actually, while I'm here, this is kind of kind of nice. I, I met my wife, Sarah, through YouTube. She got in touch and was asking some tech advice about a phone. Still got the original Galaxy S9 Plus that uh, she was asking me questions about. That was very cool. So uh, yeah, if nothing else, I met my wife through YouTube. Yeah, it's just a little, little, little behind the scenes on, on me there. Where were we? Let's talk about other things that aren't me. One thing I have sort of figured out as I've been trying to improve these videos over time, which hopefully, Hopefully, fingers crossed, you've been uh, able to see the progress. There's having a big old reflector thing, so maybe that's maybe that's made it better. But actually, just being able to bounce lights off this, or more importantly, uh, when we're shooting B-roll, 
uh, stick it in front of windows or you know in uh, uh, overhead, it removes the reflection, so you don't get those horrible well reflections. So a bit ugly and uh, nowhere to store it. And I think you can collapse it down, but I've not figured it out. We'll come back to that later. We'll leave that like that. That looks good there. So this is um, what, well, what is this? It is my new vertical camera mount and it's the best thing since sliced bread. I actually uh, got some advice from my friend Andy Ruffle at eTechnics uh, who bought something very similar to this because I can mount my camera on the end of this pole. So what I can do is get this sort of overhead my desk so I can get some nice sort of vertical shots. And with this little bull head mount on here, I get flexibility with the camera. So it's actually just being able to shoot upside down, left to right vertical shots. This is such a good bit of kit. You can spend tons of money on cameras and lighting, but being able to have the flexibility of shooting with something like this, bit slapdash. As you can see, we're still figuring everything out. And I almost poked myself in the eye with this the other day. But again, I'll leave a link below if you fancy checking one of these out. So this is the usual setup that you might be familiar with if you watch my videos. We've got the, the backdrop there, that nice sort of bokeh background. And actually having that depth of field, I think really adds to the sort of quality of the video. And for video, as I say, we are actually using these guys, Sony A7S III's, that is secure. Sony A7S III's, uh, we often have a monitor on top as well so we can see what we're doing. Bunch of Sony lenses, most recent one I bought actually was this guy, it's the Sony 24-105 so we can zoom in a little bit. For audio, uh, Rode lavalier mic plugged into a Tascam recorder in my pocket every time. So not necessarily the most professional setup but it works for me and I take the micro SD out here, SD out here and then edit it together on my PC. So in this guy, my pride and joy, uh, if I get my Duff beer cup out of the way. Uh, this has got an RTX 3090. We've got an AMD R9 5950X, 64 gigs of RAM. It's a bit of a beast. But I have to be honest, aside from gaming, over the last few weeks, I've just been plugging in my MacBook Pro, which is crazy. I mean, this is still very expensive and actually not that much less than this was, to be honest, although GPU prices are still crazy. But I can just plug in my Thunderbolt port, which also charges it, of course, and I can just edit straight off the Mac. It's really, really nice. And I don't have to make proxies, even uh, though we shoot in 4K, 10-bit, H.264, which is a horrible codec, uh, but it's just buttery smooth on this. So if you are a video editor, I highly, highly recommend getting a MacBook Pro 14 or 16. But of course, no setup would be complete without a good bit of Philips Hue. So I've got the light strip behind my desk. I am gonna put a gradient strip on behind the TV soon and also uh, got a few of the bits and pieces coming. So definitely recommend Philips Hue. They are kind of expensive, but you can just kind of add to it over time. And it's kind of fun if I black out all the blinds and then put the lights to green or red or blue or something, it gives you a really nice kind of atmosphere. And then in this corner, we have the living room. It's um, actually pretty useful to be able to test TVs. So actually I didn't wall mount this. Another one behind you there on the floor. Storage is still a bit of an issue in here. Uh, but this is a really nice little you know, chill area for playing some games. We've got uh, this Sky Glass TV. This is a 65 inch Sky Glass. Definitely an interesting proposition. Not, not sure it's for everyone, but uh, I did a review of this recently. PS5, got the Series X in there, I think actually. And recently I've been playing a bit of Vanguard, also Forza Horizon 5. That looks insane on this. And while actually the sound quality on the Sky Glass is very good, I do have a Sonos Arc down here as well. Normally that would go up here, but just, well, didn't work for this setup, but hopefully we'll be doing more TV uh, reviews and TV versus videos on the TechJab channel because I can more easily get them in and out of here. Looks a bit more professional and uh, yeah, they're just fun to do. So stay tuned for more of those. We are the Borg, resistance is futile. Obviously having some good testing equipment helps. This is a uh, laser thermometer. We've got a lux meter for measuring lux, brightness on things. Uh, also color accuracy on monitors and screens. So hopefully, uh, you know, I do my research for my videos and we do a lot of testing. But altogether, I mean, this is one of the most sort of proudest moments of my life getting this one million subscriber plaque. I love what I do. I'm extremely privileged and lucky to be able to be a YouTuber creator person for a living. Uh, but it is a full-time job. I work many long hours and many long days. We all do, James included, and Pete as well, of course. But it's a labor of love, and hopefully this space will just give us a bit more room, literally, to, to improve our game, to be more creative and uh, improve the quality of things. So do stick around. Hopefully uh, you see some improvements going forward as well. And if you've got any suggestions about what we can do with this space, 
let me know in the comments below. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed as well, although I guess if you've watched this entire video, chances are you already have, but a cheeky like and subscribe will be very much appreciated. And stay tuned for a whole lot more on the tech chat. Thanks for watching. All right, James, back to work. Now for this waffling. No, seriously, James, back to work.